up guys this is David over at Nullset Computer Company and uh, today we are going to be talking about Soho Networks <clears throat> so you might be wondering yo Dave where the hoes at <laughs> and unfortunately for you guys there are no hoes today no hoes but we do have Soho Networks and Soho is an acronym that stands for small office home office uh, and that's all and that is just a small network it's a little baby network uh, that consists of maybe a few printers maybe a few file shares and uh, you know 10 workstations whatever something like that all right uh, so let's go over the different parts of hardware that you're gonna need for your Soho network uh, and I have props so the first thing that you are gonna need is a modem now where is my modem here it is okay first thing you're gonna want to have is a modem this guy right here okay this is a regular just uh, cable modem you can see on the back we have our our patch panel uh, port and also we have our coax cable port this guy gets you onto the internet your ISP should give you one of these uh, and yeah that's all it does it just gets you on the internet that easy okay that's a cable modem. Now, I also have, one second here, I also have what's called a DSL modem. This guy right here. You can see the DSL, wherever it is up there, you can see it says DSL. Uh, and this is a digital subscriber line modem. So if you have DSL, this one's going to plug into your phone line. If you have cable, the other one's going to plug into your, uh, your coax cable port. Uh, you can see on the back it has two ports. You have your uh, Ethernet port, which plugs into your, what we're going to discuss in a second, your router. And you also have your phone port. And this is going to plug into a filter, which is then going to plug into your telephone uh, line. Okay? So those are the two most common types of modems. There's also T1, there's T3, there's, you know, there's a couple... There's a bunch of other different ones, but those are two of the most those are the two most common that you are going to deal with. Uh, the next thing we are going to talk about is our router. This guy right here. Uh, this is just a simple four-port Linksys router. You can pick one of these up for really cheap nowadays. Uh, you can see on the back there, there's uh, four ports. Uh, you got a port for each device that's going to be connected to it. And you also got one that's going to plug into your cable modem or your DSM modem, whichever. All right. So let's talk about why you want to actually set up a Soho network. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a little whiteboard drawing. Let's say we have a uh, we have computer. This guy right here. That's our computer. And uh, we have ten of these. Okay. So to the power of ten, and he's happy. Okay, and, uh, you, you know, we have a couple other computers over here, got a computer over here, whatever. Let me move that into frame. Let me do a little bit better job of that. So, we got this computer over here, okay? And this computer over here is connected to a printer, okay? That's our printer. I'm going to say that's our printer right there. Hopefully, we can get this camera to focus. Come on. All right. That is our printer. So, uh, and then we have uh, we have some computers everywhere else on the network, right? Now, those other computers don't have printers attached to them. And we want to be able to have all of those computers print to uh, the, the one printer that is in the office. Okay? Okay. So, uh, in order to be able to do that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to network all these computers into our switch. Probably should have said that first. Okay, so we're going to have our we're going to have our modem. We're going to have which connects into our router, which then connects into something called a switch. That's our switch. That's our router, and that is our modem, okay? Now, a switch is 
this guy right here. Okay? This is a switch. This is just a basic 8-port switch plus a tr plus a, got a trunk port there. And uh, this guy is uh, kind of like a router, but not quite as intelligent. Uh, and there's two types of switches. We have an unmanaged switch, which is uh, what this guy is. This is unmanaged, meaning all I can really do is plug this thing into the network and pray that it works. Because if it doesn't, the only thing I can do to try to troubleshoot it is unplug the damn thing and then plug it back in. And that's all you can do. Whereas a managed switch, you are able to log into it. Uh, via the network and you can configure it. You can configure different things on it, you know, how it's going to prioritize packets, you know, what kind of different things it's going to be used for, etc, etc. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's, our, that's our managed and unmanaged switch. This guy right here again. If you have a hub, throw it out. Those things are crap. Nobody uses them anymore. Donate it to uh, an antique shop because it's a relic. And if you're having issues on your network and you are using a hub, that is most likely your problem. Because once you start getting, you know, 10 computers on one, on one hub, excuse me, uh, and they're all trying to talk to each other, you get packet collision. You get lots of issues. So using a hub, get rid of it. They're obsolete. All right. So let's go back to our whiteboard, okay? We have our switch. And this switch has ports on it, and all of these are going to go to our different computers. Okay, so we got a computer there, we got a computer there, we got a computer there. These are all our computers. All right. So the switch is going to plug into the router. It's going to plug into the modem. Pretty simple. Not much to it. Okay. So that's, that's the hardware part of our SoHo network. Um, if you're just now getting into networking, this is the most simplest form of a network. Uh, and you can set this up at, like I said, your house, your home, your office, wherever. And it, I mean, it's good, start, it's good to start with to get a basic concept and a basic grasp of how networking works. Now, all these computers use something called TCP IP, which is a transfer... Uh, what is it? Uh, transmission Control Protocol slash IP, which is Internet Protocol. Okay? That's Microsoft's uh, protocol. You know, there used to be a bunch of, there was like uh, IPX, uh, there was NetBuoy, there's a bunch of other ones. TCP IP is what everybody uses. Okay? The next part that I would like to talk about is the operating side of things, or I'm sorry, the operating system side of things. Okay, so whether you're running Windows XP Professional, which allows up to 10 concurrent connections, or if you're using Windows 7 Professional, which allows up to 20 concurrent connections. Uh, so with Windows XP, you're limited to only 10 workstations being on the network and using it at one time. Uh, whereas Windows 7 Professional, allows up to 20. Windows Ultimate allows up to 20. Uh, Windows 7 Ultimate allows up to 20 as well. So let's go, let's go back to our whiteboard here. And uh, so we got our group of computers over here. These are our computers. Okay, all of them. These are our, uh, these are our computers. These are connected into a switch, which is connected into a router, which is connected into a motor. Now, uh, let's say we have a, uh, a computer down here. Okay, so we have this guy down here, and he is the uh, main computer. So he's got a little printer attached to him, right? That's our printer. Okay, he's got a, he's got a printer attached to him. None of these computers up here have printers uh, attached to them. So we want to be able to share out this printer to the network. So how do we do that? The easiest way is to go on to this computer right here and configure a printer share. Uh, and, and all you got to do is install the printer onto this computer. You're going to right click on that printer, go to properties, you'll see a sharing tab. Uh, and you just want to enable sharing. When you do that, it's going to give you what's called a share name. Okay. 
and a uh, share name, it's going to look something kind of like this. It's going to be a slash slash, right? Slash slash computer name. That's the computer slash printer. That's the, uh, that is the sharing schema. Okay? So, we have, uh, once we've shared out this printer on the network, um, these computers, you can go to them and you can go add new printer, uh, and you can select uh, add a printer on the network, and it's going to ask you for this right here. It's going to ask you what computer, what computer is this printer on, and what is the name of that printer share. Once you do that, these, this computer over here that's trying to access that printer is going to pull all of the information from this computer right here, and it's also going to pull all the drivers that are already installed on it, as long as you guys are running the same operating system. So it's going to pull all the information, all the IP settings, and it's going to pull the drivers for you. Nifty, right? Right. Okay. Um, so that, as far as that goes, that is printer sharing. Pretty simple. Not much to it. Uh, one thing that I do want to say that I probably should have mentioned first is uh, all of these computers on your network are going to be part of what's called a work group. Right? So with small networks, uh, your computers are going to be on something called a work group. And a work group is basically just a uh, it's just a, a naming schema so that all of the computers are on the same uh, network. Basically, it's so, that, it's so that Windows can find all of the other computers when it does a network discovery. It can find all the other computers on your network and efficiently communicate with them. Now, when we go to enterprise networking, they use something called domains, and they use Active Directory to, to do the same thing, only it's way bigger and out of the scope of this. But I will have... Uh, episodes on Active Directory coming soon. Um, so yeah. Anyways, let's also say we have this computer again. Okay, and he's got lots of files. Okay, so he's got all kinds of files on it, and all of these files need to be accessed by all of these computers over here. These are our computer systems. All right, it's really messy, but I'm just trying to give you a, a, a brief, brief outline of how this works. So, uh, what you can do is you can actually go to this computer, and you can share these files out on the network. And when you do that, once you've shared them, you are going to want to actually set up your permissions. So uh, you can go into share. You can you can right click, go to properties on that folder, go to sharing, and you can go share this folder. And again, it's going to give you slash slash computer name slash share. Okay? Now this share can be the name of the folder. It can be your C drive. Okay? It can be your C drive. It could be your D drive. It could be whatever. And then they can all map to that that uh, that share on there, so it comes up as like a drive. You know, it's like mapping a network drive. Um, one other thing that you can do is you can set the permissions on these files that you are trying to share. So, what are permissions? Uh, permissions are just that; they're permission to do things on your network. So, maybe you don't want these computers to. Uh, be able to write to these files. So you don't want them to be able to make changes and then upload them back to the file server. What you would do is select read only for your permissions. Um, and that would only let them read the information that is on the file server. Now, you may want them to be able to modify it and upload it back to the file server. That would be read write permissions. So if you, allow the, if you allow them read and write permissions, they are going to be able to download the file, modify it, and then upload it again. That way everybody that is seeing that same file 
can see the changes that you've made. Um, now let's say you don't want all these computers over here to be able to access these files. You can set uh, certain usernames on your work group to only be able to access this file. So let's say this guy is in accounting and this guy is, uh, I don't know, he's, uh, he's, he's a janitor. Yeah, I don't know why a janitor would have his own computer, but you never know, right? And you don't want this janitor to be able to access, you know, these files. Okay? So, if that janitor had a little bit of tech skill or something, and he tried to access the files on here, and you set up your permissions to only allow, you know, this certain user, or these select users, to read and write to that folder, then... Uh, only that those people that you've selected can do that. So if Mr. Janitor guy tries to go and he tries to uh, modify some files on your file server, he's going to get access denied, right? Because you have not set up the username or the permissions uh, for his workstation to access those files. Um, so yeah. Uh, and basically, that <laughs> that's all there is to it. It's that easy. So, if you found this helpful, sorry, I had a brain dump there. If you found this video helpful, please rate, like, and or I'm sorry, please rate, subscribe, and comment. And I will answer all your questions. I check my inbox all the time. Uh, feel free to go to my website. You know, www.nullsetcomputerco.com. You can check out uh, some of the graphic design work I've done, you know, whatever. Give, give me a call if you need some remote help. I'd be more than happy to give you some assistance. Uh, also, I'd like to give another shout-out to all my friends over at Eli, the Computer Guy Forums. It's this, uh, it's this great community that Eli has set up. You can, uh, you, I mean, there's just a bunch of professionals on there. There's, there's people that are new to IT. And, you know, you can just say, hey, I'm having this problem, and you will probably get, you know, 20 or 30 different responses. And, you know, your chances are pretty good that one of them is going to be able to help you. And I'm on there as well, so feel free to send me a message on that, too. So, yeah, I'm David with Nullset Computer Company. This was an introduction to Soho Networking. I hope you, uh, I hope you learned something today. You have a great day.